Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will cover the six key steps required to run a successful column chromatography. <music> column chromatography is an important technique in organic chemistry used to separate uh, several compounds on the basis of polarity. The first key step in running a successful column is to choose the appropriate solvent mixture that you will determine using TLC. In the example shown here, we want to separate a mixture of this ketone from this alcohol. The ketone is nonpolar, the alcohol is polar because of this hydroxyl group. So we ran four hypothetical TLCs. The first one we ran in pure hexane, this mixture of compounds. And hexane being nonpolar does not push the material up the TLC plate very far, so both spots appear at the bottom. This is unsatisfactory. So we tried in pure ethyl acetate, this is the origin, and ethyl acetate being polar pushes both spots all the way to the top. This is also not very good. So we try one-to-one -one mixture of hexane and ethyl acetate in our TLC chamber, and this puts our spots, they're separating, but they're a little bit too far up. So we want to bring these spots down, we add a little bit more hexane, so in two to one hexane ethyl acetate, the spots are a little further down the plate and well separated. The top spot is the nonpolar spot, which is the ketone. The lower spot is the more polar spot, which is the alcohol. And so this two to one mixture would be the ideal mixture to separate these two materials. And so for our column, we will use this two to one mixture of hexane and ethyl acetate to separate our materials on the column. Everything you need for a column chromatography is here. You'll need some sort of glass column, you need silica gel, some beakers in which to make the slurry, you need your solvent, usually a couple of solvents. Here we have hexane and ethyl acetate to make your solvent mixture, to make the slurry. We also need glass wool for the bottom of the column, sand. It's good to have a cork ring in hand to uh, pack down your column and I've put the glass wool in with a glass rod. You'll also need a few TLC plates, some spotters, and a UV light. The next thing we're going to do is make up 120 mils of our solvent using 80 mils of hexane and 40 mils of ethyl acetate. We now have our two to one mixture of eluent made up and we can make the slurry now in the beaker. Our next step in preparing the slurry is to measure out 60 milliliters of silica gel. I'm going to do that into this 100 mil beaker here. This has to be done in a fume hood. There's a lot of dust that kicks up and you don't want to breathe silica gel. It's very harmful for you. There's approximately our 60 mils. I'm going to put that into the bigger beaker in which we will make the slurry. Now we pour in our two to one mixture of solvents into the bigger beaker and mix it and sort of the consistency that's pourable it's, it doesn't want to be too thick doesn't want to be too runny that looks that looks about right now I'm going to put that aside before we add the slurry to the column we have to ensure that we have a glass plug at the bottom which we've already done and add a level sand bed on top of the glass wool which we'll do with the help of solvent We've used about 15 or 20 mils of solvent. I'm now going to put the sand in through the top. I'm now going to rinse off the sand that's stuck to the side of the column using our solvent mixture. Using a plastic funnel, we pour the slurry into the column. wash excess silica gel into the column using a bit more of our two to one eluent. We now drain the excess solvent out of the column by putting our solvent mixture Erlenmeyer at the bottom, opening the stopcock. This will bring the solvent level uh, down eventually to the top of the silica gel. This is probably the most time consuming portion of setting up the column. It's frequently desirable to tap the column, the silica gel, to get the column packed properly and tightly and aids in the solvent coming down. 
After adding the silica gel to the column, there's frequently a lot stuck to the top, and I'm going to rinse that out with a few pipettefuls of our solvent mixture. Now the solvent is almost to the top of the silica gel. It's helpful to give it a tap with a cork ring. This just helps the silica gel pack a little more, which gives an optimum result for the column chromatography. And make sure you don't tap the column with anything metal. When the solvent gets to the top of the silica gel, I'm going to turn the stopcock off. Now we're going to load our mixture of chemicals to be separated onto the top of the column. Preparing a pipette, as described in our video over here, I will now pipette our reaction mixture onto the top of the column. I'm going to put the pipette as far down into the column as possible and let the compound drip down the side of the column just in one place and it's now at the top of the column. It's important to pull the pipette straight out of the top of the column. Many students will start to take the pipette out and move it too quickly, breaking the pipette, and the glass tube will go down to the top of the column. Now we're going to resume running the column by opening the stopcock. The first 20 to 30 mils of solvent will not contain our compound, so we can let it run back into our solvent mixture. Our mixture of compound that we've added has come to the top of the silica gel. We have to start to add our eluent, our two to one mixture, onto the top of the column. I've added one pipette full. I'm gonna run that through. After this little bit of solvent has gone into the top of the column, we're in the position to add more of our eluent to the top of the column. This is an important step because it ensures that the column bed is not disturbed. Once I have a centimeter or two of solvent on the top of the column, I can safely pour the remainder of our solvent into the top of the column. If at any time you run out of your two to one eluent, you just make up some more. With this particular sample, we won't start collecting our fractions until the colored material is at least three quarters of the way down the column. So we've got a few minutes to go. One hour later. We're going to collect approximately five to 10 mils in each test tube, which is going to be about three to four centimeters up the tube. Our column has run as expected. We've collected 10 fractions, and now we're going to quickly survey these fractions to see if we can find the compounds of interest in them. We'll take a spotter and spot every second tube onto a TLC plate like this, look at it under UV, in order to determine in which fraction we'll see our compound. Our quick sampling of these 10 fractions show that there's nothing in fraction two and four, there is something in six, there's nothing in eight, and there's something in 10. So it appears that we've got everything off the column, the chromatography's done. Now that we have our high and low spots, we can continue to survey the rest of the fractions to know which tubes we should combine to isolate our desired compounds. We'll combine fractions, put them into a round bottom flask, rotovap them, take an NMR to confirm that we have indeed isolated the pure compound. The cleanup is fairly simple. We'll dispose of the unwanted fractions into the appropriate organic waste solvent bin. We will then tip out the remaining solvent at the top of the column into its appropriate waste, and then we're gonna tip the column upside down, open the stopcock, let the silica pour into the waste silica gel beaker. Thanks for watching our video on column chromatography. If you have any tips or tricks on how to run a column, leave them down below in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks again, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.